When you hear the word Anzac, certain questions come to mind, and one of them is, who gave the Anzacs their name? The answer? Lieutenant General William Birdwood, a respected and popular leader to the Anzacs, who learnt the skills of leadership during the Boer War. One of those skills was to consider all possible options before taking action, an aspect of leadership that I personally respect in a leader. William Riddle Birdwood was 50 when he was appointed commander of the Anzacs. He was considered youthful as most senior officers were quite a bit older. He was chosen to command because of his ability to lead a force with a reputation of poor discipline and a fierce fighting skill. This choice of a leader proved to be very effective. In March 1915, he was tasked with reviewing the situation regarding the Dardanelles and the Navy's attempts to crack its defences. He conceded that troops would have to land on the peninsula. Refusing to send them in blind, he requested an observation balloon attached to a ship through a cable. This would become very effective when the Anzacs landed in Gallipoli on the 25th of April 1915. After the landings, Burwood would make daily visits to the soldiers in the trenches where he was popular with the men who would often refer to him as Birdie. But these visits did not come without danger. During one of the visits, he received a head wound when a Turkish bullet cut his scalp. This did not deter him as he continued to visit the trenches as well as practicing his daily exercises before taking a swim. Burwood always exhibited great concern for his men, yet he was the only one of the senior officers who opposed the idea of evacuation. However, he still commanded the operation successfully with no losses. Later, in 1916, Burwood continued to lead the Anzacs in France, first in the Bull Court Offensive, where casualties were immensely high, and then in the Battle of Mouquet Farm, which was part of the Battle of the Somme and began during the Battle of Poziers. After these events, Burwood decided that a new approach must be taken. This resulted in the Anzacs being divided into two corps. After the war, Burwood toured across Australia twice and was appointed Commander-in-Chief of the Northern Army in India until his retirement in 1930. After this, he had ambitions to become Governor-General of Australia, backed by King George V. Unfortunately, Australian Prime Minister James Scullin insisted that an Australian candidate be appointed, after which Burwood led a quiet life until his death in 1951, where he was buried with full military honours. I respect both Burwood's life and the decisions he made, such as the way he would visit the men in the trenches and how he led the Anzacs through the dark days of World War I, by supporting the morale of the soldiers and adapting to the situations that caused most of their problems. He also attempted to implement his leadership skills in civilian life, further showing his ability to adapt, a skill I believe that is very important in a leader.